Hello again, Sam here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we'll be discussing the topic of animation. Like most pixel art games, animation is one of many key aspects of game development that gives life to the world you're creating. We will be discussing basic fundamentals and techniques that can help you understand the processes involved in learning and developing in animation. We will explore processes from initial concepts to key framing and motion. More than this, however, we really want to offer our experience and advice on the topic of pixel art animation itself. We hope that this tutorial will help you on your journey. To give us some context as we explore, we will focus on a more combative animation with one of our more aggressive spirits, the Shadebreaker. The Shadebreaker is a manifestation of anger and rage born from the unjustful persecution and death of an innocent human. These spirits roam the lands, seeking to enact blind vengeance upon anyone who may cross their paths. Let's delve into the process of creating such a being. It is important to understand that a well-planned concept is essential for you as an animator. Doing so will allow you to establish a solid foundation and streamline the rest of the animation process. When designing your characters, it is essential to think about what parts of the animation will physically move, how much these parts will move, and what key physical features will easily allow the viewer to track its movement. Character design, depending on your art style, is best kept simple. To keep it simple, we can use clear, clean shading and a clear and unique silhouette. Whereas, a character with complex shading, where the character has, for example, gradients of color, will prove to be a nightmare to animate. This is because limbs and features stretch, contort, and change perspective constantly, which will make tracking the large amount of colors and shading difficult. Clear and concise shading with a clear shape and form makes it easy on the eyes for not only yourself, but for the players who will be looking at this character for much of the game. Help yourself by creating smart and thought out sprites. You don't need to make your job harder than it needs to be with complex shading. Before the animation process begins, we break the character up into sections, limbs, and appendages. By dividing the character into separate layers and colors, you'll be able to better understand and identify the different body parts between frames, which will help you greatly in the animating process. This also allows you to use the existing character designs as a skeleton, of sorts, for you to animate with. A common approach for new and aspiring animators is to skip out on keyframing and to animate frame by frame, which almost always ends with a poorly paced and unappealing animation. Utilizing keyframes to give your animation structure and timing is a key technique in creating solid and smooth animations. Keyframing is the technique of drawing the character in key positions for the specific animation. For example, an attack animation, where the Shadebreaker throws out a powerful punch to shatter the defenses of anyone who receives it. The keyframes of the animation are split into four core sections. The wind up, the impact, the wind down, and idle frames. Don't be afraid to really push the character's features by pulling and stretching body parts to really exaggerate movement and impact. Draw each keyframe with intent and interest like drawing your character in a cool action pose. Creating exciting and dynamic keyframes will always help to sell an animation. With these four frames alone, you can already grasp the motion and general feeling of the animation itself. For attack animations, you want a clear wind-up before the impact so that players can see and understand the wind-up frames. Wind-up frames are the portion of the animation that displays to the player that an attack is coming. Using your own judgment, try to allow a good amount of time before the impact. This will allow players ample time to react and, perhaps, time a counter, such as a block or a parry or a dodge. You can pace the timing of this by deciding the speed in which your animation will play out. Or better yet, add more unique frames which will help the overall look of your animation. Similarly to the wind-up, the wind-down for an attack should be timed fairly and should match or even take longer than the wind-up frames. This can help give the player equally ample time to react and throw out counter-attacks or have movement opportunities. Good timing can also stop the enemy character from spamming attacks at you, which can ultimately lead to a pretty unfair experience. 
start by adding empty frames between each keyframe. Even with nothing there, our brains can already imagine how the animation will look and feel. Filling in the frames between the keyframes is a much easier process, and utilizing onion layers will help you find the middle ground between frames. Think about how the body will transition between the previous frame and the next, in terms of position, and fill in the blanks accordingly. Observe reality, or even stand up and recreate the movement for yourself. Have fun with it. Filler frames are great for controlling pacing and timing within your animation. You can use them very effectively in areas such as your wind up and wind down sections to really add weight and depth. The most important tip we can give is to take your time. Be sure to periodically step away and observe. Give your eyes a rest after working on your animations and go and focus on something else. Go for a walk, get some fresh air, make yourself a cup of tea or coffee and come back with fresh eyes and a fresh mind. You'd be surprised at how many mistakes you can pick out of your own work. We do hope that this video will be of assistance to anyone, whether you're an aspiring animator, game designer or generally interested in our project itself. Observing life by looking at the world around you and paying close attention to how people or objects work and move will assist you deeply in how you perceive and explore animation as an art form. Never stop practicing. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back soon with another devlog, so be sure to stick around, take care of your loved ones, and we'll see you again soon.